Vince Carter, a roller coaster ride with the Toronto Raptors. Welcome to the show. Today we're diving into the NBA career of one of the most electrifying players ever, Vince Carter. Chapter 1. The Draft Day Trade, 1998, NBA Draft Vancouver. The Golden State Warriors are on the clock with the fifth pick. The Raptors had their eyes on Vince Carter. They made a draft day trade, sending Anton Jamison to Golden State in exchange for Vince Carter and a million dollars. This trade ignited a basketball frenzy in Toronto. Vince Carter was set to be their savior. Chapter 2. Welcome to the NBA. This is where legends are born, and Vince Carter was about to make his mark. The lockout-shortened 1999 season couldn't start soon enough for Raptors fans. February 5, 1999, marked a new beginning. Vince Carter makes his NBA debut against the Boston Celtics. The anticipation was palpable, and the crowd was electric. 16 points, 3 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals, and a block. These stats were just the beginning of what was to come. It was clear from that very first game that this kid was special. His performance left everyone in awe. The athleticism, the grace, the power. Vince Carter showcased it all, leaving fans and critics speechless. Vince Carter was going to be a problem in this league for a long time. His impact was immediate, and his potential seemed limitless. The NBA had found its next superstar. Chapter 3. Rookie Sensations On March 25, 1999, Vince Carter put on a show, dropping a then-career-high 32 points on the Houston Rockets. It was a performance that had everyone talking. He was more than just a scorer. He was a walking highlight reel, dazzling fans with his incredible dunks and athleticism. Vince Carter was leading the Raptors to respectability, one game at a time. By the season's end, Vince Carter's impact was undeniable. He was named the Rookie of the Year, a testament to his outstanding performance and influence on the court. Throughout the season, he averaged 18.3 points, 5.7 rebounds, and three assists per game, showcasing his all-around game. His contributions weren't just on offense, he also averaged over a steal and a block per game, proving his defensive prowess. The future was undeniably bright in Toronto, thanks to their high-flying superstar. Vince Carter had not only brought excitement to the Raptors, but also hope and a vision for a successful future. Now, if there's one moment that defines Vince Carter's early career, it's the 2000 Slam Dunk Contest. Oakland, California. The stage was set, and the anticipation was electric. Fans from all over had gathered to witness something special. Vince put on a show for the ages. With every dunk, he pushed the boundaries of what was thought possible. The crowd could hardly believe their eyes. Reverse windmills, 360S, and more. Each dunk was more spectacular than the last, leaving everyone in the arena on the edge of their seats. You name it, he did it. His creativity and athleticism were on full display, making it a night to remember. His final dunk, a 360-degree windmill, sealed the deal. It was the perfect exclamation point on an unforgettable performance. He looked at the camera and said, it's over. Those words echoed through the arena, signaling the end of an era-defining moment. Vince Carter had just put on the greatest slam dunk contest performance of all time. His name was etched in basketball history. The basketball world was in awe. Fans, players, and commentators alike couldn't stop talking about what they had just witnessed. It was a night that would be remembered forever. The 2000 season wasn't just about the dunk contest. Vince Carter was on a mission to prove he was one of the best players in the league. February 12, 2000. Vince Carter, your starting guard for the Eastern Conference All-Star team. He received a record-breaking 1.9 million fan votes. Vince Carter had arrived. February 27, 2000, Vince erupted for a career-high 51 points against the Phoenix Suns. He was unstoppable, hitting shots from everywhere on the court. But the Raptors still hadn't tasted playoff success. They squeaked into the postseason, but the New York Knicks made quick work of them in the first round. Vince struggled mightily, especially in the pivotal Game 5. It was a tough lesson for the young superstar. Chapter 7, A Playoff Breakthrough The 2001 playoffs were different. The Raptors were back, and this time, they were hungry. They drew a rematch with the Knicks in the first round. May 4, 2001, 
Madison Square Garden. Vince put the team on his back, scoring 27 points, grabbing nine rebounds, and dishing out seven assists. The Raptors had won their first ever playoff series. The Raptors were on a roll. They had just dispatched the Knicks and were set to face Allen Iverson and the Philadelphia 76 ERs in the Eastern Conference semifinals. The series went the distance, seven grueling games. Vince was balling out of his mind, putting up monster numbers. Game seven, Philadelphia. The atmosphere was electric. Neither team could pull away. Chapter nine, the shot. Game seven was a classic. Vince was doing everything he could to will his team to victory. The Raptors found themselves down by one point with just seconds left. The ball was inbounded to Vince. He dribbled, sized up his defender, and let it fly. A 19-foot jumper for the win. It clanged off the rim. The Sixers had won. Chapter 10. The Graduation Controversy Vince had flown back to Chapel Hill to attend his graduation ceremony. Many felt this was a sign of disrespect, that he wasn't fully committed to the Raptors. This incident cast a shadow over his time in Toronto. Chapter 11, Vince Carter Day. Despite the playoff heartbreak and the graduation controversy, the Raptors still believed in Vince Carter. On August 1, 2001, they made him a very rich man with a six-year contract extension worth $94 million. The city even declared it Vince Carter Day. The expectations were sky high. Chapter 12, Injuries and Discontent. The 2001 to 2002 season started off with a bang, but then disaster struck with a knee injury. The Raptors struggled and whispers started about Vince being injury prone. The relationship between Vince Carter and the city of Toronto was starting to sour. The 2004 to 2005 season, it was clear something had to give. Vince was openly unhappy in Toronto. The fans were frustrated with his lack of effort. On December 17, 2004, they traded Vince Carter to the New Jersey Nets. The trade sent shockwaves through the NBA. The Vince Carter era in Toronto was officially over. On April 15, 2005, Vince made his return to Toronto as a member of the New Jersey Nets. The atmosphere was hostile. Vince thrived off the negativity, dropping 39 points. The Nets won the game. The relationship between Vince Carter and the city of Toronto was beyond repair. Vince's return to Toronto the next season was just as contentious. January 8, 2006. The game came down to the wire. Vince dribbled up the court, pulled up from three-point range and let it fly as the buzzer sounded. Swish! The Nets won by one point. It was the ultimate act of revenge. Chapter 16. Playoff Revenge In 2007, the Raptors and the Nets met again in the playoffs. Vince led the Nets to a six-game upset victory over the Raptors. It was a sweet victory for Vince. The Raptors were left to wonder what could have been. The fans were left with a bitter taste in their mouths. Chapter 17. A Long-Awaited Return November 19, 2014. Vince Carter returned to Toronto as a member of the Memphis Grizzlies. The fans greeted Vince with a standing ovation. The Raptors played a video tribute to Vince during the game. It was a moment of reconciliation. Chapter 18. Vince Carter played for 22 seasons, the most in NBA history. March 11, 2020, Vince played his final NBA game. He retired as one of the greatest dunkers of all time. Vince Carter left an indelible mark on the franchise and the city. He was a surefire Hall of Famer. Chapter 19, April 6, 2024, Vince Carter received basketball's highest honor. He was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. It was a fitting tribute to one of the game's all-time greats. Vince Carter had finally reached the pinnacle of his sport. Chapter 20, September 27, 2024, the Toronto Raptors retired Vince Carter's number 15 jersey. It was a fitting end to a complex journey. Vince Carter had finally come home, and this time, it was for good. Outro. The roller coaster ride that was Vince Carter's time with the Toronto Raptors. Vince Carter's impact on the Toronto Raptors and the city of Toronto is undeniable. 
He put the franchise on the map and inspired a generation of fans. Until next time,